Hello my dear students welcome to this new video that i have prepared for you to acquaint you with the poem the rape of the lock written by alexander pope before i go into the details i would like to make it very clear in the beginning that this poem the rape of the lock has been written by pope on a request made by his close friend john carrel who is a prominent roman catholic of that time not only this carrel himself explains how lord petri cuts off a lock from arabella farmer's hair he also tells that both the families are daggers drawn since then a friends the second point which is very important is that the rape that is mentioned here has nothing to do with the meaning and connotations that we have today it doesn't refer to the extreme of sexual rape but it is an earlier alternative for the word derived from the latin rapere means to snatch to grab or to carry off so don't be so serious as you know that the poem itself is not about a serious theme rather it is a ridiculous rendition of the incident that took place between the two aristocratic families of the time friends as you know that the rape of the lock is a famous epic poem or it is called mock heroic poem you know that the epic is a narrative poem of supposed divine inspiration it deals with the subject of a great and momentous importance for mankind the characters drawn in the poem are partly human and partly divine the language and the style in which the incidents are described is full of elevation and dignity the rape of the lock satisfied all the tests of epic poetry it belongs to the class of literature called burlesque a burlesque is a parody of a very large spectrum in which not a single poem but the whole literature 
of a specific period is targeted. The language and thought proper to a very serious theme is reproduced in a setting of something ridiculous or trivial. Unlike grand passions and great fights between the heroes in which the immortals take part, we have as the theme of the rape of the lock a petty amorous quarrel assisted by the spirits of the air. The epic portrays an age around the personality of a god or a semi-god and its characters are heroes. The rape of the lock on the other hand gives us picture of a very fashionable society. The central figure here is a pretty social girl while the other characters are a rash youth, a foolish dandy and a few frivolous women. Instead of deep and genuine passions as found in ancient epics, we come across a succession of mock passions in this poem. The action of the rape of the lock turns on a very trivial incident, that is, the cutting of a lock of hair from a lady's head. It has nothing to do with the meaning of rape that we have today. It is simply a cutting of a lock from the hair of a lady. Actually, the incident is a real one wherein one Lord Petri cuts off a lock of hair from the head of Lady Arabella Farmer. This makes the families of these uh, two to have a big and consistent quarrel between them. This simple and ordinary incident becomes the stimulant for the composition of this poem. Though the theme of the poem is suggested in the invocation itself, as we generally have in epic poems, but it is ridiculous, trivial and insignificant. The action opens with a mock heroic manner with the awakening of Belinda, the heroine of the poem. Belinda is the very goddess of beauty and the luster of her eyes surpasses even that of the sun who is peeping tremorously through the white curtains in her bedroom. Pope writes here, So through white curtains shot a tremorous ray and opened those eyes that must eclipse the day. Though the whole structure of the rape of the lock is cast in the epical mode, but it does, but it losses the needed seriousness of an epic because the incident it deals with is very trivial and insignificant. The poem is divided into cantos like an epic poem and there are ironic parallels to the main incidents of the epic. The poem begins with an invocation in an epic style as we have generally in great epic poems. It goes like this. Say, what a strange motive Godness could compel and a well-bred lord to assault a gentle belly. Students, as in epics, in the rape of the lock too, Supernatural entities are brought into action. Belinda, the protagonist, is in divine care of the sylphs. Pope writes, Fairest of mortals, 
thou distinguished care of thousand bright inhabitants of air. But these sylphs are fragile, airy beings, and are helpless against the evil designs of men. Despite all their concern and effort for Velinda, her beautiful lock of hair is raped or cut here by the naughty baron. There is the mischievous gnome who, like Milton's Satan, is intent upon making Belinda miserable and all her admirers. The gnome addresses the wayward queen who rules the sex from 15 to 50 thus, Hear me and touch Belinda with chagrin. That single act gives half the world the spleen. The supernatural elements and the divine entities are profusely used in the epic. In the Iliad, there are gods and goddesses, while in the rape of the log, we have the sylphs and gnomes. These aerial spirits are small and insignificant things and are, therefore, exactly in keeping with the triviality of the theme. They guard the person of the heroine Belinda and when there is a fight between the admirers of Belinda and those of the Baron, they take part in the fight like the gods and goddesses in the epic poems. Pope writes, propped on their boatkin spears, the spirits survey the growing combat or assist the fray. An epic poem must contain some episodes also. In keeping with this practice, Pope has introduced the episode of the game of Ombri, which is described in great detail. There is also the hazardous journey of Umbriel to the cave of Hesplin. Then there is the battle between the lords and ladies, just like the battles in epic poetry. But in the true mock heroic style, this battle is fought with fans and a snuff instead of with swords and spears. There are one to one combats also between Belinda and the Baron and between Clarissa and Sir Plew. Belinda's toilet is another engaging account in which Pope has attributed in a perfect mock heroic manner the solemnity of a religious observance to the luxurious toilet of a lady of fashion and frivolity. Pops, powders, patches, bevels, billet dogs are all brought to the same table and the slight and the series are all strangely synthesized. The rape of the lock is a rare instance of the mediocre theme which is given in an exalted treatment for satirical purposes. All through the poem, a pose of importance is given to all that is thoroughly unimportant and insignificant and practically meaningless and farcical. The very concept of writing an epic on the rape of a lock of hair is funny in itself and bears testimony to the poet's effort to make the little great and the great little. It is really amusing that a cutting of a lock from the hair is treated as a grievous act of crime and a Kurukshetra-like situation is created. In the rape of the lock, the balance between the concealed irony and the assumed gravity is very nicely mixed. The little is made grand and the grand 
made frivolous. It is perhaps the reason why this poem is remembered as one of the representative poems of the great Augustan period in English literature. So that's all today. Uh, the next aspect of Alexander Pope I will discuss in my next video. The students, if you like to have a printout of this lecture, then you can have it from my college website or from the university website. Thank you.